One of the greatest grappling matches ever occurred a couple weekends ago at the Craig Jones Invitational. Cade Ruotolo won via judge's decision, but it was a very hard fought battle. In this video, we'll explore some of the underlying anatomy and kinesiology of a couple of moments from this match. The first clip is a throw that Cade hit on Tackett into the wall early on in the match. All right, so as promised, we're gonna watch this nice little Uchimata he hit here on Tackett uh, into the wall. And Tackett ends up getting up just cause he's really savvy but we're gonna go through step by step and learn about some of the, the kinesiology at play here. All right, so he's got the whizzer, and whenever he turns to take advantage of the, the forward motion from Tackett, we're gonna look at two things to begin with. We're gonna pause first right here. So whenever he plants his foot and starts to bring the other leg up, we're gonna look at the left leg first, that movement right there, that hip hinge movement that's happening alongside other movements, but again, we're just focusing on the left leg, requires a really strong eccentric contraction from the hamstrings. So whenever we're doing movements like a deadlift or a single leg RDL, the hamstrings are elongating as they're producing force. Uh, we talked about that in the stretch shorten cycle video if you wanna go look at that in a little bit more detail. Now, if we move to the other leg, this leg is also extended using the hamstrings, but it's using it in, instead of the closed chain where the foot is planted on the ground, it's being used in the open chain. So he's using his leverage of his hamstring, so the hamstrings extend the hip and flex the knee. So he's actually taking really good advantage of the hamstrings here uh, along with the glute max. And you can see it contracted here at the top, uh, getting that full motion of, of hip extension in order to, to lift him just enough uh, to finish the Uchimata. Now, whenever he plants eccentric hamstring and then concentric hamstring on the other side, uh, he's also forcefully throwing his body forward. So this is trunk flexion. Even though it's a triplanar movement, um, most of what he's doing here to complement these this eccentric uh, hamstring motion on the, the leg that's planted on the ground uh, is trunk flexion, side bending, and rotation. So it's a nice triplanar movement with the muscles like the rectus abdominis, internal, external, oblique on either side. And then you have muscles that side bend like the lat, the obliques as well, and the quadratus lumborum, all working together in unison as he slings his, you can see, watch his head, it's a good indicator. So with that wizard, he slings his head down and to the left. And so this is forward trunk flexion in the sagittal plane. Uh, left rotation in the transverse plane, and then left side bending in the frontal plane. And then he just follows through really nicely to finish him into the wall. So let's walk through it a little bit quicker. So he plants the leg, eccentric, begin the eccentric control of the hamstring, the leg plants it on the ground, begins here. He's also concentrically contracting the hamstrings and the glute on the other side to produce hip extension in the open chain while he does this nice triplanar trunk movement uh, to finish this beautiful throw into the wall. All right, we'll watch it one time full speed and then we'll move on to the next view. Plant, throw, perfect. And now we'll move on to a really nice back take by Andrew Tackett. All right, and now for this really slick back take from Andrew Tackett, it's really athletic, uh, both of these guys are super athletic, but this requires a ton of coordination, uh, just like the last throw we looked at. So this may look familiar, he tries to do the same type of throw, right? The only thing that's different is his body's not turned in a little bit, and he also doesn't grab the other leg. His hip is not to his hip, or Ruotolo's hip's not on Tackett's hip, uh, and he just tries to, with the arm control here, grab and rotate him forward. But what Tackett does to combat this is first, you know, he. He gets lucky that he doesn't, that Cade didn't have his other leg through because when he, if he extended that hip, he probably wouldn't have been able to, well, he definitely wouldn't have been able to make contact with the left leg on the ground like he does here. So really hardcore eccentric control again, but this time by the quad. So the quad is eccentrically contracting here to stop. If you think about a jump, whenever you're landing, that is an eccentric motion designed uh, to stop or slow down that movement. The descent of something like a squat is also an eccentric movement as well. So he does that. He also does a really good job of this other leg counterbalancing what he's about to do. So he's about to, we'll just move up to the trunk. He's about to do a throw by, right? Using the momentum 
uh, Cade's momentum. He's got the underhook, and then he uses a combination of trunk flexion and side bending and rotation again. Uh, except for this time, he's using it in combination with shoulder flexion and a little bit of horizontal adduction as well from muscles like the anterior delt and the pec major, but really even more shoulder scapular elevation here, right? You can see how he kind of shrugs his, shrugs his shoulders to get that and stays nice and tight so that he can take the back. Now, this makes it a little bit easier because we've learned that leverage is very important in some of our recent videos or videos in the past. So if he were not to have swung his leg around, it would have been much harder for him to keep his balance and maintain that momentum coming forward. So one more time, he lands, really heavy eccentric quad control, super athletic, legs out to make sure that he can uh, counterbalance some of the weight that he's moving forward. And in order to do that throw by, Tackett does use his momentum so it's not as forceful of a trunk flexion as it was with Cade, but he flexes his trunk, rotates to the right and side bends to the right, and then scapular elevation along with some shoulder flexion and horizontal adduction. Uh, all of that coordinated to equal a really good black, uh, back take here. Uh, he's got really good control because he kept control of that arm the entire time. So let's watch it. It's in slow-mo, but we'll watch it full speed here. Very nice. All right, I lied to you guys. I'm gonna give you a little bonus clip for staying this far into the video. Uh, so if you stay this long, you get a little bit of an extra clip. Now this is the a standing mirror lock that uh, Cade tried to hit on Andrew. And I, I, I kind of live by this saying, you know, if it's, a lot of people think this is a dick move. Um, and I've, I've heard it said before, I don't know who originated this or if it even matters, but you know, the, there's no such thing as a dick submission if you get the tap. Uh, but there is such thing as dick timing if you don't allow for the tap. So just keep that in mind. I don't think, I think Cade was just trying to win a fucking million dollars. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. Uh, but let's go through what's happening, you know, mechanically here. So whenever he kind of sits back and hits this mirror lock or attempts the mirror lock, the shoulder and the elbow are doing a couple of things here. So for one, if you were to take Cade away from this, from this video and you were to just see Andrew Tackett freeze framed here, it would almost look like he's doing some sort of weird uppercut. So we call this, this is a 90 degrees of flexion at the glenohumeral joint. And what happens whenever you flex the arm before you try to externally rotate it, which is essentially what Kate is doing to finish this submission, uh, what happens when you flex the arm or abduct the arm or extend the arm before rotating it is the amount of available space within the joint actually decreases. So you're tightening the joint capsule even more in certain areas. So his shoulder is flexed, and then he tries to externally rotate it, right? And so that shoulder joint, kept the glenohumeral joint capsule, which is pretty much an extension of a, of a very fibrous kind of sac that protects some of the, keeps the synovial joint fluid in the joint space and things like that, uh, that can be damaged in something like this. And some of the glenohumeral uh, ligaments as well. But what's happening at the elbow is that there's a ligament here called the UCL, the ulnar collateral ligament. And you guys may have heard it in baseball players, have to get it sometimes, called the Tommy John surgery. The Tommy John surgery. Certain fibers here, that's actually how we test the integrity of certain fibers of the UCL. So that's put on a heavy amount of tension as well. So not only is Cade kind of extending his back in like using really powerful muscles with a really powerful grip here, uh, to, to crank on the shoulder and the elbow. But Andrew being the absolute, I mean, look, look at the, the angle here, right? So Andrew Tackett's trying to counter that by taking his, his back or his uh, side and decreasing the relative amount of external rotation he's able to get. Uh, very kinesthetically aware, and he's an absolute dog because he just kind of, he doesn't get it and he just keeps the underhook there instead. So really cool stuff. Uh, I'm glad he didn't get seriously hurt, uh, but you know, when a million dollars is on the line, it's kind of hard to not uh, attempt submissions like this. So let's watch it through, and then that will be the last view of the video. Yeah. High-paced, aggressive jiu-jitsu at its finest. Hopefully this helps you guys understand some of the underlying anatomy and kinesiology involved with some of these movements whenever you're watching in the future. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.